Hello, hello, Merry Time Zone friends. It's Mad here today, bringing you another demo for the channel, courtesy of Steam Next Fest. Today, we are playing Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles, which is an evolving demo from Wired Productions. This has been all over my Twitter, and I'm finally going to get into it, so without further ado, grab your cuppers and settle in. Welcome to Bulwark, a game about chaotic creativity. No conventional controls, one button to paint the landscape, another to move about. And while you paint towers and walls, people will start to make the world come alive. Keep building, that's the trick. This can be confusing at first, overwhelming even, but don't worry. There's also no mistakes. So the first thing you see when you boot up the game is a message from Thomas Sala, who is a solo developer of Bulwark. And now for the obligatory look at the Steam page description. Bulwark Falconer Chronicles is an open world builder with freedom and expression at its core, allowing players to build sprawling towns, spires and fortresses that become hubs for trade or rallying grounds for conquests. Hey guys, editing Maddie here to let you know that I recorded this back in June 2023 and at the time of recording I forgot to mention that this is an evolving demo so there have been a lot of changes since the time of recording. This game releases on the 26th of March so by the time this goes up it will only be a couple of days before this is out. The demo is still available, go and check it out if you want, but keep an eye out on when the game comes out. It's going to be very soon. So what I know of this game is you have a map which is islands and a bunch of ocean and you can build whatever your mind can think of. I have never played a game which has quite this amount of creative freedom so it's going to be interesting to see how much I can come up with. What I've seen online already is just incredible. There's been a lot of fantastic builds and I'm going to give it a go today. So let's take a peek first at the controls. Okay, so it seems like we've got specific build command icons. We've got ones for harbour, tower, unbuildable area, foundations, and to upgrade current. We also have a bunch of different symbols for resources as well. And the keys, we have the ability to zoom in and out, go up and down on the floors, demolish, look at the map, building and upgrading, Hopefully all of this will become easy to flow through once we get into the building. So let us take a look. This is the campaign mode. Here you get a taste of the open world building sandbox. It has a basic tutorial, a resource system based only on distance rather than how much you can produce and an ever expanding set of encounters, world events and unlockables. A word of advice, click and build everywhere. There are no mistakes and slowly figuring out what builds where and how things grow is part of the game. It's about experimenting, so don't be afraid and just go wild. It seems like in campaign mode, perhaps you have structured set goals, which hopefully is going to help us learn how to play the game. So we're going to go into campaign mode, see what we can do with that. And then if we figure out the controls, maybe we'll hop into sandbox at the end and have a go. So the scenario settings. Starting faction is free house. The free houses value prosperity, stability and growth. They want to rebuild, desiring only peace. The starting location is New Haven. Starting extractors are unlimited and the tutorial is enabled. Fantastic. So you do get the option to turn that off. Let's see how well I get into it. Ah, you're finally here. We've already built a few essential buildings. I'll assist you in connecting things up and getting the settlement up and running. Thanks. While you're on the ground, we will focus on a single building at a time. This will allow you to build <coughs> outward in a variety of ways and upwards later on. Use middle mouse orbit to rotate the camera around the selected building. Use X and Z to zoom in and out. First, connect this outpost to the wood mill, which is located down in the shallow water beside the sea tree fungi. Without wood, we cannot build. This resource extractor is missing access to workers. Move the cursor towards the outpost until it snaps or the blinking orange ground icon pops up. Then press the left mouse button to select the outpost. Connect it to the woodmill. Use the mouse to move your cursor. Move it towards the woodmill in the shallow water until it snaps. Then press right mouse button to build a connecting walkway. Notice how workers are already building houses and industry along the walkway. 
Wherever you build and our workers can reach, they will settle. Let's now focus on the wood mill. This is your wood mill. It produces and transports wood across walkways. Let us build a basic wooden tower with a walkway towards it. Extend the build line with the mouse until a circle is displayed and then press right mouse button. Build a new connecting tower from the wood mill. You just built a basic tower. It is used to connect up your settlement and transport vital resources. Workers will also build homes and industry around it. Move the cursor to the wood mill. Press left mouse button to select. The nearest selectable building is always shown with the blinking orange ground icon. Wood can only travel a limited number of walkways away from the wood mill. But this can be increased by encouraging workers to build along walkways connected to the wood mill. Build more connecting towers and walkways from the wood mill. Expect the resource flow with tab to see the output of the wood mill grow. So we have plus 10 and that's connecting... Yeah, that's connected between both of the buildings that we have so far. Alright, but it wants us to build more connecting walkways. So let's build... Let's build one out this way. Good work. The wood mill is now delivering wood further than before. So we can move on. Across from the wood mill, we also built a stone quarry. Let's connect that to our settlement. Build connecting walkways to the stone quarry already built on the rocks beyond the wood mill. So if we go out to here, can we connect this one up? No, that doesn't appear to allow us to go that way. Can we go straight from the wood mill? Can't go straight there, but we can build up onto this rock. Can we do that from here as well? Great job. Now we have access to the quarry, our wooden towers can be upgraded to stone. Move the cursor to the wooden tower selected and the build line retracted, then press right mouse button to upgrade it. We can use this stone to upgrade various buildings and walkways. And, just like the wood mill, by allowing workers to build around it, the stone industry can expand. Resource extractors cannot be upgraded. Encourage workers to settle around them to gain more output. This stone quarry works similarly to your wood mill. It produces stone that can travel a limited number of walkways. Let's select this guy. Now we have access to the quarry, our wooden towers can be upgraded to stone. Stone towers create stone walkways. If you rebuild a walkway adjacent to a stone tower in place of a current wooden one, it will be upgraded to stone. Ooh. So if we replace this one... Hey, nice! We've got a nice new stone bridge all the way up here. You can see them building their little houses and huts along the side of this. It's pretty neat. Alright, so it wants us to select the outpost. Outposts can be upgraded as well. Let's use the stone to upgrade the outpost to its second stage. We can add foundations Ooh. to basic towers and outposts. These allow workers to build a higher class of housing on them increasing the worker output. Add a foundation to your outpost. Extend the build line slowly until square icons are displayed. Press right mouse button when a square is displayed to build a foundation. Oh, here we go. The worker output of our outpost can be improved further by connecting more towers and walkways to it. Build more connecting towers and walkways to your outpost. Inspect the worker flow of your outpost with tab. Okay, so we have plus five workers, so I assume that we need to build some walkways out All here. All towers allow for foundations, wood, stone, and later, command towers. Command towers also allow for battlements. Ooh. Flying your surveyor. We have done well. It is time we started being more ambitious. Take to the skies and seek out iron ore. Use space to switch between ground and air modes. Use left mouse button to command your surveyor to fly to the cursor. Use M to view the world map to see the nearest resources. Your surveyor allows you to build resource extractors, harbors, and outposts on other islands. It will also help to get you out of trouble, which is never far on the Ursi. This is such a cool mode up here. Find an iron resource on one of the small islands nearby. Use left mouse button to command your surveyor to fly towards the cursor. 
right mouse button to build within the resource area and M to view the world map. The world map shows our holdings, which we can fast travel to. I will also mark any freelance captains that enter our waters, as well as suspicious locations. Oh, interesting. Alright, so let's take a look at this map. So we've got the worker outpost here, the woodmill just here, and this must be the stone quarry we built. So we've got extra wood over here, one up there, and I assume this anvil must be where iron is. So, right mouse button to fly that way. Oh hey, they're on the way. Nice, look at us go. Your surveyor can build a mine on this spot. Workers will mine for ore, and the metallurgical industry will be built up around it. Iron will allow our most advanced towers and buildings. We now have access to iron, but it needs to be transported across the water. Let us build a trade route for ships that can transport iron and other resources back and forth. Ooh, did you see the land change then? That was fun. I love the way that the landscape kind of changes and adapts to the way you build things. Harbors must be built in deep water close to a shorebound building when your cursor changes to an anchor. A suitable captain must then be assigned. Alright, I guess we'll put one down here then. Several captains are now available. Each captain hauls specific resources. For this trade route, iron is required, but wood is also recommended to expand the mine later. We have Captain Alexander. My ship only carries wood and workers. We have Captain Hellaforth. I will carry stone and workers only, nothing else. And we also have Captain Johnson. I will only carry iron and workers for our industries. Well, we definitely need somebody who can carry iron, and it recommended somebody who can carry wood as well, so we can assign up to three captains, so I guess we'll do Captain Johnson. My ship is outfitted to handle iron ore. This route isn't profitable for me without that cargo. And Captain Alexander will assign him as well. This isn't the best use of my vessel. Find me a better route. I suppose we haven't actually told it to go anywhere yet, so maybe they're getting angry about it because we haven't actually told them where to go yet. Harbors always need to be built as pairs. Aha! As soon as you build two, a trade route will connect them. Captains will carry your resources over vast distances. Build a destination harbour in the deep waters near your outpost. A trade route will then be automatically established between the two harbours. The golden arrow on your surveyor compass will point you back to your outpost. This is a really interesting system so far. I'm really curious to see how all of this comes together. Obviously this is only tutorial mode so far, but I can really see a lot of freedom coming from this, so I'd be curious to see just how much people can make with this. Okay, so I think that island over there in the distance, I think that's where our harbour is over that way, so we should probably build another one over here. There we go. If we build one here, then that's near to the other building. Let's pop one down here. Select your outpost, so we can start expanding it further. With iron, we can start building defensive structures, such as imposing command towers. But before doing so, we need to upgrade our outpost into a proper citadel. Upgrade your outpost to a citadel. Upgrading. With all major resources now at our disposal, Let's focus on building command towers. These can be built with multiple floors as well as additional foundations and balconies. Upgrade a basic or stone tower to a command tower. Press right mouse button when a tower is selected to upgrade it. First upgrade to stone, then to a command tower. Right, well we have this one out here so I guess we'll just do this one. So upgrade to stone. Upgrade to command tower. Mighty command towers have the potential to reach high into the sky. Their height only being dependent on the level of access to workers. Build this tower as high as possible. Use right mouse button to add more floors to the command tower when the tower is selected. Oh, we're going up. We set as high as possible. You are building from. Lower floors build foundations, while higher floors build balconies and sky bridges. Use E to move down to the lower floors needed to build foundations. Ooh, there Command we go. tower foundations are strong battlements that support your tower. Build four foundations from your command tower. 
Slightly extend the build line until you see a triangle or square icon. Then use Q to move up to build. From high floors. The more expansive your tower, the more powerful your commanders will become if they are assigned here. Okay. We can see it start to be filled in down there as well. That's neat. Build three balconies from your command tower. Use Q and E to move up to the higher floors you want to build from. This command tower is looking stout. We already have an experienced warbird commander among our retinue. Let's assign them to this command tower. Stable and martial. We've traveled to this place together. The fate of my warbirds and falconeers lie here with you. No finer stable since the heydays of the War of the Tree. We will protect you and our people. Okay. We protect our own from the air. My warbirds are the strongest and fastest. My stable makes Sark Hunter and Northern Grey Dive traits which have not been seen in decades. Alright. New forces are ready nearby. Fly up to their command tower for them to join our battle group. This tower and its commander now stand watch over our settlement. Their forces will deploy, joining our battle group when the surveyor is near the command tower. Our settlement is established. We have access to resources, a citadel, and command towers. It's time to explore the surrounding area, finding more people that will help us thrive. These are desperate times, so we may need to accept unlikely neighbors. But be wary of who you invite in. If they bring their old allegiances, conflict is sure to follow. Now it's all up to you. Head out and explore the Ursi. Rebuild our society as you see fit. Protect yourself and our citizens well. Good luck. Thanks, Atlan. It sounds like there's factions involved in this. I'm very curious, so we're going to stick in this tutorial mode for a bit, and uh, let's see what else we can build. Oh, do you see them? I think these are our falconeers. Buildings on the horizon. Oh? Oh, wait, hang on, what's this? Is this what he's talking about? Let's go check it out. Interesting, we have more iron over here. Ooh, Forge Master Young. The Freehouse Remnant, I presume. The fires of the Redmouth Orthodoxy welcomes you and wishes to bring the glory of the Holy Ore to your settlement. We can accept or decline. If we decline. The Orthodoxy holds the power to increase your settlement's metallurgical prowess, boosting production to great heights. It is unwise to not join in worship of the Redmouth. But if we accept, we gain a commander and progress towards Freehouse dominance. Okay, I guess we'll accept. Let's this do it. This building houses a commander who is not. Whoops. I didn't mean to click off of that. Sign me here and we will double the output of any ore mine and consider this a gift from the Great Red Mouth. Alright, sweet. So we've got a new Forge Master already over here. So I guess let's build a mine. And then we build a harbour. A refugee settlement has been spotted on the horizon. Perhaps we can take these people in. Wait, where? Uh, I don't see what he sees, so we'll go and investigate that in a bit, I assume. Alright, we only have Captain Hellaforth, and he'll only carry stone and workers, so we can't assign him to this one just yet. We'll hold on to this, because we'll come back to it in a little bit. Let's just check where on the map it is. Alright, perfect. So yeah, we'll be able to get that if we can find... I assume we get other captains. Ooh, what's this? This is such a peaceful game. As somebody who plays Banished quite a lot, this really intrigues me. I'm not particularly good at free building quite like this, but the fact that this gives you so much freedom and it's just so peaceful to just kind of fly around, build up cities. There's so much to discover. Mansa, Captain for Hire. The Mansa Order sees your settlement and wishes to assist. They have assigned me and my ship to support your efforts. Would you accept my service? If we decline, there is no greater ally on the Earth than the Mansa Order. We may be diminished from the war, but we have survived far worse. But if we accept, we gain a transport vessel, iron and stone, and progress towards Mansa dominance. You have enrolled a trade ship, Captain. They can be assigned to transport goods. 
Sweet, we have a new captain. It worked for us now. Before the Great War, the Imperium held the resources and the Mansa controlled the technology. Now only petty fiefdoms squabble for what little remains of Earthsea's old regime. Oh. Interesting. So there's law behind these factions as well. A refugee settlement has been spotted on the horizon. Oh, I see them. Perhaps We've got we one over there and one there. I am just quickly going to go back to the harbour, see if we can assign that captain. That way we can start getting some more ore back into our main settlement. Here he is, Captain Atlan. I carry iron and stone from your mines and quarries to wherever you need it. My cargo is protected by mounts of guns. It's as safe as can be. Well, that's exactly what we need. Let's get you in there. We also should get somebody who can carry wood, but we have been assigned to the other harbour, so maybe we'll look around to see if we can find any more boats flying around. Uh, it does look like, though, that we need another harbour. So if we build one right here, connect to the end of this wharf. This trade route is now connected. The captain can transport their specific goods back and forth. This game is so pretty. Whoops. I did not mean to build something there, but we have another wood mill. Uh, that was accidental, but let's just make more wood. Why not? We're already here. And we now also we have access to stone as well, so we can literally just connect this up. So we connect that all the way back up there. Let's bring up the tabs. So we have plus eight on the workers' front. And we can build like we can build more foundations. The ship has entered our waters. Ooh. It's marked on the map. Ooh, we have a ship. Interesting. I'll go and check that out in a second. This is so neat though. We can build this up however we want. We can literally we can add extra foundations that'll get us extra workers and we can see all when you're in tab mode you can see all of the routes between things. You can see how the production is going between areas. Like if we go down here to this wood mill we can see that this is getting plus 12 over here and this one has plus 8. So with everything being connected this is so neat. So we can connect these wood mills up straight through the middle of everything. We can always upgrade everything, so this can all go to be stone. This is so cool. Those aligned with the free houses now constitute the majority of your settlement. They are now the dominant political force. Trading and security are highly regarded, and good relationships with all factions are the norm. Oh, interesting. I love that it's giving me updates about the factions. That is cool. Really interesting to note the different dynamics and things that you can possibly change. You can decline and possibly get bad relations or you can accept and change the dominance of which factions that you have. Imperium, Captain for Hire. We heard about the Imperiums before. Greetings, I'm on contract from House Mercius, but that might include a steady commission for a route here. What say you? If we decline, he says, I can afford to steer my ship away from here, but can you say the same? But if we accept, we gain a transport vessel, stone and workers, and progress towards Imperium dominance. Well, we do need more captains. You have enrolled a trade ship captain. They can be assigned to transport goods. Over at this harbour over here, We've got this guy who can carry wood, but we needed a second guy for the other harbour. So if we go back over here, this is the harbour that we had which didn't have a captain for wood. So we're transporting iron back, but I don't know if we can upgrade any of this unless we have wood. So let's have a look what the new captain will do for us. Oh, interesting. Captain Heidelauf, someone here is blocking my assignment. I'm guessing they have an old grudge against us Imperial folk. So there's like a an old competition between Mansa and Imperium factions because the guy we have here is a Mansa person. So we can't put these two together. Interesting. Let's see how this works. Let's go back over to our other Iron Harbor here. Let's see who we've got over here. We can probably move Alexander out. And now let's see if we can put Hydalaf in here. Transport stone, plain and simple. Now we can actually see what he transports. So if we do that, there will not be access to wood over on this side. My hold is full and the route seems safe. Things are good. Sweet. So now he's taking extra stone over here. We don't have wood over here yet though. So that's interesting. You have to try and come up with different ways to get various different resources between areas. So this is producing plus six iron right now, but we can expand this out, make more room for workers. So let's say over here. So let's see what happens if we build outwards from the mine. There is no stone available for this upgrade. 
Okay, so we can build outposts up here. We can build things with wood. Connect all this up with walkways. We can start supplying stone back over here at some point. Now that we've got wooden basics, I imagine you can supply stone over here and we can kind of build this up and really start it being a prosperous little place. This is so neat. Honestly, I could spend so, so much time just building. There is so much creative freedom in this. I, I'm loving this. The political balance in our settlement is changing in favor of the free house refugees. Hi. I'm here to help infamous Lustenoff pirates refugees. These are hard times and thus they bring the need for uneasy al alliances. What is this flying up above us? Do you see that there just under the accept thing? These are hard times and thus they bring the need for uneasy alliances. My group and I have been on the run for so long we seek refuge and will submit to your service. We get fresh combat forces outpost to salvage and relocate and progress towards pirate dominance if we decline it we get hostilities additional forces have joined our battle group all right well there is a ship here but i did also i think it was down here it was telling us that there was some refugees down this way so let's go and see what happens if we go and talk to them freeman zullo this meager holding was always a last resort we need a more permanent home. Demolish this temporary haven so we can rebuild upon a spot of your choosing. If we decline, he says we carry no grudge, we bring no war, only grief. The skills that we wield would have become the backbone of your settlement. But then if we accept, we have an outpost to salvage and relocate, and we get progress towards free house dominance. Well, we're already dominating in terms of faction leadership, but we can help them out, so we'll accept. It's said to move the outpost, if we hover over it, we can hold left shift to demolish it. You are now carrying a salvaged building. Select a spot on solid ground or in the shallows, where you can rebuild it from your surveyor. Ooh, so we can just move them. Let's move them closer to where we have everything else. We can put them up here. Ooh, how high can we put them? Can they, like, live right on top of this bit and they can then build down? Excellent. We have an outpost that provides workers. Ah, oh, damn it. Put them down here. Be mindful here. of an outpost's allegiance. This influences the balance of power for your settlement. So these can really affect relationships with other factions as well, potentially then. Okay, so now how do I connect this outpost to everything else that we have? We just... So we have three workers coming out of this, but we can build around it. So now these guys can build upwards up to here. Let's connect this all the way down to the wood down here. And we could also connect it down to the harbour. Just so we have a lot of little walkways, a lot of connections. If we upgrade the outpost, we now have four workers. Upgrade it again to a citadel. Now we can build foundations. This is so neat. The amount of different things that we can do here is just... Oh, this is awesome. I'm having such a good time with this. There is literally just so much freedom with what we can do. You get to watch them... Whoops! Well, I guess there's another one down here now. <laughs> we do have another question mark over here, so... I'm just gonna fly ourselves over there. Go take a peek at what this is in the distance. Quartermaster Harmon. We are but humble refugees, many from the Great Imperial Houses. Please demolish this paltry holding and we will rebuild wherever you survey a good spot. If we decline, she says, we are greatly reduced and this is our last holding. Reject us and many more are certain to pass, their splinters lost to us. So that doesn't necessarily get us negative relations with their faction, but it will mean the end potentially of them. So if we do this, we get progress towards Imperium dominance and we have to relocate the outpost. I'm fine with doing that. Let's just get more people in. So we wants us to demolish this and I accidentally just upgraded that's fine we can probably move somebody over to this big island over there seems like a good place to put something down we get a lot of good foundations here and it's still close enough to everything else that we can connect it up and make sure we're still passing resources a local storm has been spotted oh. nearby some factions use these as cover for their war parties we should investigate so there's a storm Apparently you can conceal enemies? That's interesting. The surveyor can build a wood mill here. Build it, 
and attract craftspeople and industry around it. Improving the distance, wood can be supplied in our settlement. Okay, that's good, because I wanted to... presented our waters. It's Atlan. marked on the map. I'm trying to talk to my audience here, Atlan, please. <laughs> what Excellent. Oh my god, Atlan! That provides workers. <sighs> what I was trying to say is that it's kind of good we're going here because we have wood available right here, so we can build... Your surveyor can build a wood mill here. We can build, build a wood mill, as Atlan is once again telling us. Around it. And the reason this is good is we can build this outwards. This resource extractor. I know, Atlan. To work I'm working on it. You cannot build here. There is no tower with access to wood nearby. Connect from a tower within range to a wood mill. I'm trying. I'm getting there. You cannot build on top of the sea tree fungi. These are needed to produce wood. Oh, interesting. So you can't build you over the top of those. Here. There is no tower with access to wood nearby. There is. It's right connect here. So let me try this in a slightly different way then. Now can we connect this? That was built really badly on my part. I didn't quite realize it was going to go up and over like that. And that would be absolutely horrendous in real life to go up and down. But it's connected and that's what's important. All right. So we've got a little bit here. The way you would do it now would be, I assume, you build a harbor get access to stone from over here and then we can upgrade this whole section so that's really neat you can really just the political balance in our settlement is changing in favor of the free house refugees <sighs> atlan thanks you're being really helpful but also you keep talking over me man let's go check out this storm let's see what all of this is about Ooh, Rector Magnus Raven. Damn, this dude has a really cool name. We see your settlement and its treaty swords path which have been upheld for countless cycles. I've been assigned to further protect and advance your settlement. We decline, he says the water has changed many in opinion on our order, but we would respectfully remind one and all that the path and Mansa guidance has kept humanity alive on the Ursi. Respectfully. Respectfully reminding, so that's a gentle reminder to say, hey, we've had a really strong part in keeping us going. But if we accept, we gain a commander and progress towards a monster dominance. Having another commander would be nice. A mighty commander. So we can probably build another command tower over by this other settlement that we dropped. Let's see, this one down here. This one was the one I dropped on accident, but we can probably upgrade this. Turn this into a command tower. And then with these, we build these as high as we want. The higher the better, I think he said. Alright, so that's fully upgraded now. And then we go back down to the lower levels where you can then build foundations. And then from here we can build balconies. This is so cool. The system's amazing. Like, the mechanics to get everything to work. Once you figure out how everything connects and oh look how beautiful this is as well all of the lights just coming up as it's going towards nighttime oh and look it's so pretty the day night cycle in this game is it's just really beautiful major domus joshua a punitive expedition in your employ is a captain who transported our families to oberon's gate knowing that the gate was dismantled they sent our loved ones away without giving us the chance of following this we come to exact our punishment hand him over except we lose a captain and their vessel decline and we get hostilities we've been accepting everything so far let's let's stand our ground let's see what the client says i transported my family and yours to safety anywhere away from this wretched ocean is what they told me i deserve your scorn but i suffer your fate equally oh Okay. What do I do about this? Are we good? Do I just leave? Run away! <laughs> I don't know if I was supposed to leave that battle. Let's go back just to see what happens. I want to see how the fight ends. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Do I just let the battle rage until it's over? So these must be falconeers then. The ones that are flying in on the birds. There's only one left, so I assume we take it out.
Ooh, we have another ship. Our service is appreciated in many a port. You would be wise to accept us. He's a free house, so he's one of he's one of our faction anyway. If we accept, this here is an ironclad steam rake. Not many of these around anymore, and certainly not under a free house banner. We seek a new patron and bring our guns to bear on your enemies. If we accept him, we gain a fighting vessel, a steam rake, and progress towards free house dominance. You Let's do it. An officer. They command a mighty warship to defend your trade routes. Ooh, defensive trade routes. Oh, hello. That's beautiful. The sunrise is coming up over the water there as the boat's disappearing. This is just absolutely glorious. Hello, Captain Baron. Our research post has not been supplied in over a year. We would go apostate and find safety in your group. The order is fractured and cannot provide for us. If we decline, he says, our kin cannot stay out here exposed. We will move on and remember your rejection. Captain Baron will remember that. If we accept, we'll just do it. We'll uh, get his outpost and it's progress towards Mansa dominance, but we still... I mean, to be fair, we have a lot of Mansa people there anyway. So as long as they don't interfere with our other members, it should be fine, right? So let's see, we have wood available over here, and I thought I saw earlier on that we have access to stone around here as well. So before we drop this building down, let's have a look what else we have out here. There it is, yeah, we have stone on the other side of this big mountain, so we could build up here. Yeah, let's drop them just right in here. So we can build wood here, put a harbour at the end. Captain Nichols. Any pirate will do well to avoid my guns. I'll sweep this trade route clean. We can't build out from here, so we need to build a harbour right here. This one will connect this to the outpost. And then we need to assign somebody who can use wood. Alright, so then that would get them set up there. This is really neat. Just being able to build out new areas. Okay, so we gain more output by building around them. So say we can build around the quarry. And then from here we can build some extra areas. We can just build inside the quarry. This is so cool. You can literally just keep going as much as you possibly want from here. Obviously within the demo there is a limit. We're on 41 out of 50 so there's only so much that we can build on top of this but I'm just having so much fun just putting things in. This whole thing has just been absol an absolute blast. Just building new things, building up the outposts. You can spread pretty much as far as you want on the whole map as long as you build harbors and have the captains for it. I can see so many hours going into this game. People with slightly better creativity perhaps than me when it comes to city building will have an absolute blast with this. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. I just found photo mode. Oh. Okay, this is so cool. Oh wow, you can get really in close in this. You can really kind of see the sort of infrastructure they're trying to build in here. One and three does a camera roll. Q and E is up and down. Arrow keys are focus. So you can really kind of pull it in, focus on certain parts. You can get like a first person view. This is so cool. Imagine you're all the way down here and you're just like looking up at the city. Oh neat, so R and F? changes the day-night cycle so you can pick what lighting you want. Oh, this place looks so neat at night. Oh, you can get right up in close with your surveyor as well. Ooh, and if you press space while you're in this mode, you can kind of watch everything still go. So what happens then if you press L? <gasps> um. <gasps> oh, we're watching it build! Oh, that's so cool. It's like a time lapse. This would be so good if you were doing, say, like a build of a certain area. You could basically just like focus here and then be like, hey, here's a quick video of the way I built this area. Oh, I love that feature so much. So I want to do something really quick here. We can assign commanders to our outposts. I want to assign Magnus Raven to this outpost. The political balance in our settlement is changing in favor of the Mansa order. Ooh, putting him in there changes in favor of Mansa. Interesting. But now that we're flying around the command tower, we get to see his falcon is. Oh, wow. Yeah, changing the day-night cycle. Like, a matter of moments can completely change the atmosphere of this entire thing. I want to see how close to this falconeer we can get. 
Oh, that's neat. Look at that. Has he got a gun on his head? I am absolutely in love with the photo mode on this game. The building aspect of it is fun in and of itself, but being able to get a really good look at your handiwork, like, let's just watch this in build mode while we talk about this for one last second. You can see everything in the background coming together. This part of the island gets completely built up. You can see the progress of it, and it's just this wonderful view where you can just see what you've done, like, Actually getting to witness what you've made is just, it's so fun. I love this. Overall, I have to say I'm very impressed with this game. The freedom and creativity of being able to build whatever you want, wherever you want, as long as you make connections where you need to go. You've got so much space on this map. You have so many places that you can go, things that you can do. Pretty much if you can think it and you can connect it, you can make it and i absolutely love this about this game the fact that this is just a tutorial campaign mode but you can do this in complete sandbox and you can just do whatever you want with no restrictions i can see this being a lot of fun for a lot of people i'm just flying around taking in the scenery as we sign out here we have our falconers with us this is just this is so much fun i can see myself spending a lot of time in this game as someone who's not really played much in the way of building games, I can see myself learning a lot from the mechanics of this, the freedom and creativity, and I am looking forward to seeing what other people have to make with this. If you want to give this a go yourself, wishlist the game down in the description down below, and there's also a link to the Twitter page for Thomas Sala and Wired Productions, who are the developers and publishers of this. Please go ahead and give it a follow, and if you want to play this game yourself, you can use the hashtag BuildYourBulwark to share your screenshots. Give some love to this solo developer, because for one person, this is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave your comments, suggestions, and feedback down below. And remember, it's always tea time somewhere in the world. Bye-bye.